essentially eliminate a variance that's active puts the cultivator in a position of having to, I could, could possibly be blackmailed. I, mean, I really don't know, but you can begin to think about what could happen if the cultivator is forced to receive the permission of the neighbor every year. I think it's a dangerous situation, and I know that the, the board is very sympathetic to public safety issues. We've already had some public safety ramifications from variances, and I, I wish that you guys um, think about that in the future with your decisions. Anybody else? Okay, we'll come back to the board. Any thoughts, discussions for staff? I think Justin actually just brought up a pretty good point right there. I didn't. I had never. You know, I had never. Are you looking for a motion? Um, well, any more questions, and then we can go to a motion for discussion. Or um, I do have. A, okay, go ahead. I would. I would like to know if the um, permit. I would like to know if the permitted uh, license holder would be willing to answer a question if if he's present, or if Michelle, if that would fall to you. Um, there was a, a suggestion made by the audience and then the neighbor. And my question for the um, permitted license holder would be, would he be willing to, if he had the variance this year, then move his garden next year? Um, I think that it can be considered, obviously, but um, like everyone was stating, it would have to be cut in half. You, you're, I'm sorry, the sorry. protocol, you have to come up to, yeah. the, to the mic. Um, definitely, if that is the only way, then he would do that. Um, I just want to, again, point out that he will have to cut his garden in half in, in next year, you know, if that was tap and if the variance wasn't granted. But yes, if he had to, then he would be willing to do that to get through the year. Any other questions for? Um, yeah. I have a question for staff. Thank you. Go ahead. So um, we heard from the, uh, the neighbor who seems very flexible. Both parties seem flexible and trying to be good neighbors. Um, was there any discussion? I think I heard from the one neighbor that there were some view issues. Was there any discussion with the applicant that that could get mitigated before it even went to the commission to find some really short-term solutions? Did, did that come up with staff? No, Leslie, it's, oh, oh. sorry. And Scott is dealing with the applicant. Okay. So I, uh, I don't recall if we had that explicit conversation, but that is captured within the staff report, that that is an option to uh, increase the natural screening mm -hmm. between the garden and the impacted neighbor. So I think that's a, a reasonable um, middle ground. Right, and that wasn't really a consideration at the Planning Commission, is my understanding? It was included in the staff report. But it didn't seem like it had a lot of traction. There were I don't, photos that showed what it looked like and said, you know, a possible. Okay. Thank you both. I have a question for Rick. Rick, since the variance process has um, gone to like the second year under a director's permit, is there a motion in this uh, scenario where we could grant the rest of the year, which obviously we could do, but then disallow or make it have to go back to the Planning Commission next year? Or maybe that's a question for Margaret? Um, the there actually, as President said, where we've had one garden that would, was allowed to continue this year under a provisional type situation. Um, because it was in the provisional program, it was allowed to finish out this year, knowing that next year they would have to do uh, something different. And this, I would see as appropriate to fall under for that. And especially since the homeowner has a has acknowledged that and said you'd be okay with it, uh, that would actually have been our, our modification of the recommendation was to allow for them to go and then 
And then uh, one thing I want to say about variance is, is that the applicant has the right to also apply every year because you know sometimes things change. And so he might be able to work with the owner and reapply under something that's worked out between the two owners for next year. But I would not act on that particular one under a director's use permit. It would be under something the director's use permit is intended after I have a positive vote of the planning commission to approve something that doesn't change. So we could say allow it Now, as it is for the remainder of this year, uh, under provisional licensing. But, and, but looking into next year is my question. So, if, if I may jump in, I, I had a, a did have a chance to talk to the director about this. Uh, if it's the board's pleasure, uh, they are annual variances. Uh, so, what I would recommend is if the board's pleasure to allow them to finish out the year, they're probably the best planning or land use um, motion that would be made would be to approve the variance for this year. Um, but not allow it to be subject to the director's use permit, meaning that next year they'll have to come back and have a formal application and can be looked at again. Um, the land use basis for that would be the fact that the, um, the, the original denial was partly based on uh, neighbor complaints, which appear to have been mitigated for the remainder of this year, uh, but not mitigated going forward. So that would probably be the appropriate uh, mechanism to move forward if that's the board's pleasure. That would be my pleasure. Yeah. Is that the form of a motion? Absolutely. Make a motion with uh, what Margaret brought forward, a variance that will continue the rest of this year and not include a director's use permit. And we can take a look at this again next year. Second. Okay. I have a question on that. Um, could not the, for next year, um, options to mitigate at the director's use level be done even not going to the commission if you have to agree neighbors? I, I would, the, the director's use permit, the intent of the director's use permit is to approve something that has in a sense been approved before where if the conditions haven't changed, I can approve that again. It's, it's meant to be that, but if it's something that needs to be analyzed again, it's been standard practice to have the variances be heard by the planning commission. And then once, let's say they make those changes and they approve it, then once that's approved by the planning commission, then future actions could be director's use permit. But in, in this particular case, I would recommend that that go back to the uh, planning commission again. For the okay. And my motion doesn't want to take away any future options or rights of my constituent. So, any other thoughts? Okay. All right. I, I will. I just have a thought that next year, unless this is mitigated, I wouldn't vote to okay. continue either. So I, I just wanted to be clear that that um, to the applicant here that 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 needs to be mitigated next year. Okay. With that, we'll go ahead and this is. Do we have to do a roll call on it? Yes, please. Yes, thanks. Supervisor Chadwick? Aye. Supervisor Finley? Aye. Supervisor Morris? Yes. Supervisor Morris? Aye. Supervisor Gross? Aye. All right, our next item up is a um, solid waste under a public hearing here also. Well, we have this as public waste, public yeah. hearing also. <laughs> okay, 3.2, conduct a public hearing, consider adoption of a resolution which confirms the 2018-2019 solid waste parcel fee delinquent list. No fiscal impact to the general fund, $35 per unit to the solid waste enterprise fund. Ms. Reed. Good morning. 
dynamic energy that can be restored of solid waste. This is our final public hearing for the 2019 parcel fee season, and it's for Dr. Nicolet with this. Uh, we add two late submittals on protest letters that add to the ones that are already on the agenda. So we have a total of four protests. One is asking for a refund of the $35 late fee that was already paid because they, this is the first year that they have been late on their payments. Uh, there is uh, another one that had trouble with online payments and wants us to accept a fake credit, which in essence was denied because it was past the June 30 deadline. And it was due to not being able to make the payment online is what the letter states. And there's one of the ones that we just saw now is a medical disability at payments that uh, were late. Uh, they've sent the payment, so they would like us to accept the late payment and wait for $35 late. <coughs> and there was one protest that actually was against the original resolution in April that is generally protesting the fee for the IOA area. And those are the only ones that I am aware of in the way of protest. Okay. Any questions? I'm a little lost what we do from here. Okay, so this is your public hearing to see any other protests there, okay. and I need direction on whether to refund the $35, accept the $30 vacant payment, and accept the payment that is laid either at $100 or $135. Okay. Thank you. We'll go ahead and open it up to the public. This is a public hearing. Any comments on the disposal fees? Diane Richards, Hay Fork. Um, $35 on $100 it seems quite um, high for a penalty. Um, I think it should be substantially lower to even that. And if you consider it, it's actually the property owners that are paying for all this. Other people can use the dump and just pay to everybody else. There's no reduction or anything. So we're bearing that cost and then you want to add another a 35% penalty, and I would assume that a lot of people didn't pay because they can't. They're poor people that have had uh, an additional um, assessment on their properties. People have come to me and said, I, I, I came in by groceries. So I would think they didn't pay it because they really couldn't. So to add on that $35, um, I don't think we should be doing that, actually. Thank you. I, I have a question. Any of the people that came to you or the four that protested? I, I don't know. They just uh, brought up to me about that they can't afford it, and then how. And they also said, you know, how come other people don't have to pay it, just the property owners? And we have some very elderly um, um, property owners that actually, because of the way our um, economy was, where they're four street people, minors, they work for themselves. They don't have, if they have any social security, it's very minimal, and so everything we tack on to them is very difficult for them. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, we had no. Good morning. Um, Carol Huang, Trinity County. I'm, uh, well, of course. Uh, Weaverville. I originally paid this bill in June. Um, I thought it was paid. Uh, I started experiencing some fraud issues. I had to cancel my checking account. I left enough funds in there to cover any outstanding checks, so I thought it was totally paid until I got the late notice. And then I paid it, including the $35 uh, for each parcel, and then it was returned to me uh, saying I paid it past the deadline. So I really would just like permission to pay the bill. Thank you. I'm just a bad bookkeeper, and I went on vacation, I thought I was up to date, and I'm not. So I want to know where to send the money and how much. 
and I'm hoping I can do that before there's a wait. So. If the payment can be accepted today, then we could adjust the list before we submit it for the auditor to put on the tax rolls. Okay. And, um, so does she need to go so over to it. solid waste? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I called solid waste they told me to come here, but now okay. I'll just go back. Okay. That makes actually, uh, if you want to wait until I'm done. Okay, sure. <laughs> I'm, as you know, Tom Fox. I'm not a property owner in Trinity County, but I am a constitutional counsel. Equal protection under the law says that all taxes have to be distributed equally. This is a discriminatory tax, your little don't fee tax for $100. It's unconstitutional. It's wrong. And if anyone goes into that dump and pays to dump a load, it should be the same. Property owner, because he's a property owner shouldn't have to pay more than the other people and most of the time those other people are contractors being paid to haul stuff away for somebody else and they don't have to pay the extra fee there's a problem with this fee taxes should be equal among the people you're public servants you're paid by us the people are being shanghai with this tax altogether you need to consider repealing it up the fee at the gate for everybody then there's no issue and you won't have these problems thank you I'm David Cusley from Hayfork. I have a uh, amount due of $135 for a solid waste parcel fee. And I didn't take care of it on time, obviously. That's why the extra $35 is on there. But this parcel is a mining claim. And we're required to not live there. We can't, I don't even camp there. When I do go there to do some work, I take whatever trash I have off-site. I take it to the dump. And I also live in Hayfork and the family that owns the property where I live is already paying this fee, $100 fee. So I would like to ask to have it waived. I, I don't think that this fee should apply to a mining claim. Is there a structure on the claim? No. I think you have a house to to pay the hundred dollars. Yeah. So, so I just thought. so the process to get that. Go ahead, explain. That's something that's carried over. That's always been in the parcel fee, and it was probably back when people were staying on those claims and working and generating the garbage to go with it. And it could be that we need to look at that and revise the way that's the link. If you wanted to. Adjust it, but it, if there's no house on it, then there, he shouldn't be getting a bill at all, correct? It's developed, is the is the term on it, which yeah. we yeah. automatically yeah. say house. But if there's, it goes by what the waste generation is on the property, and developed normally, yes, in the house. But there have been instances where that isn't. But if he's not, if you're not using your house, you don't have to pay the fee, correct? There's a vacant fee. Right. Okay. So if nothing else, you would have a vacant fee that you could apply for. Yes, you could do that. Before June 30, or you want to adjust that now? One thing I have a problem I have is that I have to go to the county recorder to, to record assessment papers and all that kind of thing. And the, there could be, I don't want that to be a hold up. I mean, this to be a hold up. Okay. Thank you. What, what should I do? Just have a seat for oh, right okay. now. Thank you. Anybody else? like one by one or yeah I haven't been keeping track but there are a few I'd like to suggest that we wave. Okay. Go ahead. No, I'm not equipped this time on 
Donna, <laughs> Judy to do it, or Bobby to. Uh, well, the, I haven't had a, a lot, much moment, but the, the one on the front, uh, Miss Rose, uh, situation is. Sorry, say A-R-I? Yeah, yes. that's correct. And um, um, the last gentleman, I'd like to wait the 135 until we get that straightened out. The mining claim. Mining, mining claim. claim, yes. Unoccupied mining claim. Currently unoccupied. It was at one point, and I can see the validity of the ordinance. And then the two other women who want to pay it in full today, minus Minus the 35. Diane, are you keeping track of all this? I'd like to have names and parcel numbers if I could, but if I get paperwork by the time I'm done, I'll be okay. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have the, the letter from her? It has, okay. Your report is how many hundred pages that I'm looking for now? <laughs> So yeah, I'm trying to find the two letters that were in the back up. Uh, page three, 384. Okay. Right there. That's where they start. Uh, Lois Van Wilkow. Parcel number 007-540-23-0024. That's on her letter. Hopefully it's correct. And then there's a uh, Benton Cabin who, uh, with the second check for $30, second year he's had the problem. I don't understand what amount he wishes, or Benton wishes, uh, waived. Is it just a $30? He wants to make a payment of $30, which is a vacant fee on an unoccupied parcel. And is it listed as a as an unoccupied parcel with you? He has submitted paperwork that shows that, and I believe that it's one that we agreed could be okay. vacant if we had received it on time. Okay, so I'm fine with that one. And then the two from today that were added. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, and Robert Rose. I'm okay with that one to include in a motion to waive and um, the odd fellows I'm not because we went through this whole program where right. we put the uh, burden <coughs> away from the odd fellows onto the right that was discussed at your last yes. hearing so okay so I, I move that forward as a motion that Bobby also included unless Bobby wants to take it no I, I concur with everything and I appreciate um, your input, Keith, on the uh, odd fellows because that, that was a major thing right. that was going to say. Just a point of clarification on the one related to the mining claim, that was a late application. Are you waiving the late application on that? Yes. It would be a $435 waive. Correct, but, but the reason it was not included was based on the fact that it was a non timely application. Uh, we're actually questioning whether if she should have been charged the hundred dollars to begin with. Correct. What I'd recommend is just including in your motion that you're waiving the late filing. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Margaret. I get it now. <coughs> it takes me a minute or two or three. And then, Diane, you've captured the two women who just spoke today. If they see I think they're both women. Done, then yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with us. Quite all right. Puzzled. Uh, Supervisor Chowett? Aye. Supervisor Benley? Yes. Supervisor Morris? Yes. Supervisor Martin? Yes. Supervisor Gross? Aye. All right. Thanks for every patient on that one. Yeah, thank, thank you everybody for coming today. <coughs> okay. On back to two reports and announcements. Report from CAO. Actually, uh, what I would like to do is 
just thank all those that were involved in, uh, in participating in, in, our, in a recent emergency. So I, I wrote it down so I wouldn't try not to forget anybody. Um, I don't have any county business to report, but if you would humor me, I'd like to do yes. this. Um, to start with our uh, Department of Transportation. Uh, they've been in countless hours, making sure roads are clear, uh, or roads are blocked, or clearly marked, and they've also assisted law enforcement with those closures. Um, Rick Tippett has attended almost every incident command over in Anderson. has been uh, diligent in picking up and transporting supplies for law enforcement, so we have to pull uh, critical staff off of that. Our law enforcement has been uh, completely dedicated. As you heard, uh, all deputies were called, and several of the CEO, CEOs were assigned to patrol to work those in protecting homes and businesses. For the first 10 days, none of them took any time off. Because of fatigue, uh, they were given one day off a week. Most of them uh, refused to do that and stayed out on the, on the fire. As you heard from a uh, chief probation officer, uh, our probation officer had been out assisting law enforcement, um, and they also have been uh, housing our National Guard in the hall, so we can have our National Guard troops here. OES has been running 24 hours a day, staffed and monitoring all aspects of the fire, doing their best to inform the residents of the activity. And I'd like to also thank our partners. We have Cal Fire, we have uh, U.S. Forest Service, CHP, Fish and Game, the State OES, uh, Trinity PUD, National Guard, Center of Fire's Office, Red Cross, and numerous volunteers have uh, been here the entire time serving to protect our community. And of course, our board members have been involved personally, uh, assisting and, and doing anything they can to, to, uh, to help these the staff. So on behalf of the county, I'd just like to thank everybody who's been involved, and it's not over. And I'm fully confident that everybody's going to stay on until the job's done. Okay. Report from uh, board members, Supervisor Mines. Uh, nothing to report. Supervisor Penley. No out of county travel, but you have an important announcement. <laughs> Supervisor Chadwick. I was able to attend on behalf of Trinity County um, my first National Association of Counties in uh, Tennessee, and uh, it was great. I would like to be able to <coughs> spend some time with CAO because. There's a lot of things that I um, learned. Now's not a good time. I brought a whole packet back, but there are things that happen at a national level, and um, uh, we have one vote uh, for the the VP, the second VP, and that's very important. And I have to say, I was totally ignorant on so many things that I think would be beneficial to um, board members to be able to collaborate um, and go forward on a national level. So. Um, for those in the audience, if you go to NACO, Nashville, Tennessee, you'll you'll get to see an um, incredible amount of um, very important things that are happening at a national level that has to do with our rural community here in California, um, the resilient uh, communities that uh, Graham started over on the coast after the Napa Sonoma is now all the way up at the national level. So there are many things that we can participate at a national level. So I was really honored to be able to participate in that on behalf of Trinity County. Okay, thank you. Supervisor Morris. Um, again, thank everyone who's been working on these fires for the last, I don't know, 10 days or more. Um, also want to recognize Supervisor Mines and his neighbors for jumping on that fire in Junction City with your shovels, and then the Forest Service showed up. Um, also want to thank uh, Congressman Huffman, Assemblymember Jim Wood for making a uh, very early donation to the shelter for things that uh, the evacuees um, may need in helping Red Cross. Um, of course, uh, I would have joined you at NACO had I not had car issues and were very aware of some of the, a lot of the federal issues that are going on. There's probably some new ones that just came up this year. Um, also, just to let you know, if you didn't see it, you might not have, because we've had uh, some county email issues. Um, the two Joint Chiefs money that uh, the collaborative applied for, I think it was in the tune of $2 million. Some of that work has been rolling out, but now um, Six Rivers is really, has just been uh, noted that some of that work on some of that project money is rolling out. Like the Rim Fire, the Yosemite Collaborative uh, has reached uh, many consensus, like our local collaborative. 
Um, but what the issue is, is a lack of resources um, to carry out some of the work on the ground for some major fuels reduction. Um, we will probably look to uh, help try and uh, attain some more money so we can uh, facilitate those projects on the ground uh, since the Forest Service budget keeps getting cut. So uh, stay tuned for some of that work. Okay, that's it? Mm -hmm. Unless I missed something there. No. Um, all right, uh, I had no out of county travel, but I do want to point out in Lewiston several times at the new fire hall and the people of Lewiston uh, have an amazing resiliency uh, the fact that they've been improving that town is the reason the town stands so between the fact that they put in their new water system with the help of the state the town would not have survived without that water system uh, the helicopters were taking about a thousand gallons a minute all day long they were dumping over 100,000 gallons of retardant a day, and that was just two helicopters besides all the water trucks. So their tank that holds 350,000 gallons, they have backup generators to keep that tank full, is why the town is still there. With the fire hall became their main station, the, uh, the ladies were cooking dinners for between 50 and 75 people, and then just feeding anybody who came in. So um, it's, it was a whole community effort from very beginning all the way up to this top state official. So I want to just point that out to everybody. All right, with that, we'll go to, oh, uh, the very important announcement uh, that the Trinity County Fair is this week. This week, this week yes. All right, and uh, just because it's smoky on this end, go to the fair and enjoy the fair. Spend a lot of money on those kids' animals. Oh, yeah, that's coming up. I've already got mine picked out. Okay, all right. So, yes, that's you guys in the back, too. Spent a lot of money. You can't afford it anymore. All right. Uh, report from Ad Hocs. Anything from the new cannabis legislation? Nope. I have nothing to report out, Judy. Okay, uh, uh, the cannabis ordinance. We're still doing that? Well, we have some, uh, the second reading of the two ordinances on our agenda today. And Keith and I um, will be looking to do some major cleanup. And I think it'll just take a lot of major time on our part to uh, go back and do some cleanup that we've been proposing internally between the two of us and get that to the commission very soon as, as soon as possible. And that would be on cultivation? Cultivation. Yes. We, uh, retail will come at a separate time, which that still needs to be worked on, and funneled through the proper channels. I think that's it on those two. Okay. New jail. I have to apologize, I don't remember the date. The RFP closes, it's this month, it's the latter part of this month, um, and it will be imperative for us to pick a contractor quickly because, as you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, rebuilding because of the fire, so us to secure a contractor is going to be imperative very quickly. So as soon as we get those open, we'll probably go into negotiations to pick a contractor. Okay. COP refinancing. Do you have anything new on that? Um, just just a quick one so basically um, I'm hoping we had a few things that we needed to address but hopefully in the next couple weeks I'll be able to come back with a couple numbers and we're circulating a um, an RFP to um, the bank so hopefully we'll have some numbers to come back for you so in the next couple weeks so. okay and then budget development yeah we're well we're, we're kind of old right now we're waiting till the final Coming September, and also waiting for our, our analyst uh, Craig to be ambulatory again. He had knee replacement, so he's doing well, but he'll be back on here shortly. Um, uh, everything is, is going well. Okay, wilderness oversight. Yeah, he submitted a mid hit, so. Yeah, so um, 
it's the wilderness bill has been submitted um, what I'm going to ask uh, he has asked for a letter of support from us um, and some some two items were taken out of the bill which was the Bonanza King and some of the little spots along the boundary of the Trinity Alps, which were buffer zones. Um, but what I'm going to do at the next meeting is bring this open up, and I would like every board member to read the bill and then have their feelings what they feel about it. Um, and if there's suggestions to change, so our options would be to support it, uh, stay neutral on it, or um, uh, ask, uh, be against it with changes, and so those are the things that we would uh, want to discuss. So uh, every district has different viewpoints. I don't know the, the South District very well, so um, when it comes to the wilderness side of it. So I'm just asking everybody to read the bill, come up with your thoughts and ideas, and at the next meeting we'll agendize this to come up with a strategy of what we should do. That's all right. That's great. Do you want Mr. Driscoll here? Or? No, I think okay. at this point, I, we don't, I think That's fine. people just need to read what, what they've written. We, we've heard a lot of different analysis around. Um, and look at that fantastic map. And, and supposedly, they swear to me, they've got a new map. So. And then we'll open up to the public so the public can give us views to see where we want to yeah, that will be a pretty good subject, I would guess. All right, on to county matters. These items include non-routine or controversial matters that are listed alphabetically by department. A member of the board staff or public may request that an item be heard out of order. Okay, and before we start, we're going to take a 10-minute um, break. Precisely 10. 